You're listening to The Kelly Track Show. I'm your host, Kelly Track, author, coach, and eternal optimist. Each week, I'll give you lessons to elevate your life, reclaim your personal power, and truly awaken and transform. Your best life starts right now. Hello, my beautiful friends. I am so excited to be back here. I was away on vacation, so we didn't have many shows in the last two weeks because I was busy sunning my buns in the Mediterranean and sitting my ass down on a beach in Barcelona, which was amazing. I... I'm going to get into this later, but I really needed that vacation more than I realized. So hence this inspiration to do a show on the importance of taking intentional rest and how if we actually slow down, it really can speed things up, even though that feels very counterintuitive. Whenever you travel, you get a new sense of appreciation of how other cultures spend their life. And every night in Barcelona... They would go to the beach and they'd play volleyball till sunset and then they'd go get tapas and like paella. And I was thinking, man, these people do it right. And then I was thinking, uh, when was the last time I took the evening and afternoon off to go play volleyball with my friends and go eat paella? Uh, mm, hmm. Uh, a long time. I don't know about you guys, but... Intentional rest is something that I have not always been very good at, which is totally okay. So I have been learning over the last couple of years to take more of a cue from my European friends. You know, North America has such a strong focus on success and hustle and pursuit and hard work. And the Europeans have something figured it out and they're doing it right over there. So to begin today's episode, let's start with a definition. What is intentional rest? I define it as carving out time for what's important to you and taking genuine rest. It's doing what you like to do and allowing yourself the permission and time to do it. I think we all fundamentally understand that rest is important, but the how part is vague, especially if you're anything like me and you have some old beliefs, you know, running around up there in your noggin that hard work and working hard and having your nose to the grindstone is the only solution. The key takeaway here is that intentional rest is a mindset shift away from the old paradigm. Many of us are relying on that belief system that says hustle is the golden ticket and If we take a rest break, it is going to slow us down. The key idea here is that you need to slow down to speed up. Like, what if we could enjoy our life right now? And what if the action was right here? How about that for a shift in perspective? This is all about living with more intention and rest and enjoyment. This is more about being the donkey that is chasing the carrot and actually stopping. And figuring out a way to eat the carrot now versus forever walking and walking and walking and walking and never really getting a grasp of what that carrot tastes like. You know, this has been a personal experiment and it's one that's worked really well. So that is why I teach it back to you guys. I remember taking my first real break away from the grind when I was 20 and I was living in Paris. And that was such a magical time of my life because it was... A time for me to figure out who I was, what I wanted to do, like go experience life outside of North America and get some perspective on it all. And I remember having a day where I was watching the clouds graze the sky and I remember thinking, wow, I cannot remember the last time I watched the clouds move in the sky. Then I thought about it, and seriously, the last time that I could recall was being five years old in my grandparents' garden, and that was like in the middle of nowhere, Saskatchewan. It was like I had gone 15 years without a moment to catch my breath. And I was like, man, there is something wrong here. And it made me feel upset because it was like, well, I feel like I kind of squandered my youth, like perpetually chasing and running after bigger dreams and bigger goals and working really hard to get, you know, straight A's and 
talk about chasing that carrot on the stick. Like, what if I had more moments where I felt truly alive? It was that exchange to Paris where I basically got the little divine download that I was like, uh, I gotta work on this, otherwise mm, the rest of my life is not gonna look like how I want it to look. I do my best at this, and I also know that it's a practice because my underlying go-to default behavior is just to outwork myself and keep pushing because I know that I'm good at that and it comes naturally to me. And if I'm not careful to take rest and actually take the rest when I see it in my calendar, I'll just keep working, which is why I want to give my golden nugget key takeaways that I've learned right back to you. So if you feel like any of this resonates with you, you've got some tools in your toolbox. So for the rest of this episode, I want to give you some of my tips on how I learned to incorporate intention rest into my life and what you can do to slow down to speed up. Cool. So let's just dive right in. Number one, understand that rest is productive. Like I said, this is a mindset shift. Rest feeds you. It is soul nourishing. It is recharging your batteries and you have to rest and recharge to show up fully and be better for those around you. A really good metaphor for this is the Tesla. I think we can all agree that this is a beautiful high performance car and it is really truly Elon Musk's genius exemplified at the max. But if you want to experience that car at its full capacity and its max speed, you have to plug that thing in. And unless it has a charge, you can't experience it in its full glory. The same thing goes for you. You got to recharge and rest in order to open up to what's fully possible. Number two, go unplugged. If you can, take some space and rest away from your phone. You know, good technology is built to be addictive, but the technology is depleting you even more. Part of going unplugged is about reconnecting with who you really are and spending time with yourself one-on-one. That's the real rest. That is the regenerative time. It's sort of when you go inwards or you do things that light you up to fill your own cup. We all know the difference between a 20-minute Facebook break and 20 minutes reading a book at a coffee shop. Those two are vastly different, and only one of those is genuinely nourishing. I don't know about you, but the last time I took a 20 minute Facebook break, I felt like shit. I was like, man, I am nowhere where I want to be in my life. What am I doing? Woe is me. So yeah, when possible, I try to say adios iPhone and go unplugged. Number three, take your rest in a way that works for you. It really doesn't matter what Tim Ferriss or Gwyneth Paltrow or Tony Robbins or some editor at Vogue does that you read in an article while you waited in the dentist's office. Like, it's nice to hear what people do to take their rest, but if it's not aligned with you, then it's going to feel like work and it's not going to fill your cup. You want to be resting in a way that is regenerative, not in a way that feels like another to-do list checklist item. Number four, schedule it in. Your calendar will always show your priorities and you want to make sure that you are in your own calendar and you know you best. So figure out when you need rest. Like, is it at certain times of the day or the month or the week? And once you figure that out, structure in rest time around that. If you have read my ebook, The Healing Blueprint, um, you'll see that big list at the end of how my day looks and how I structure in all my success rituals and mornings and afternoons and night and what my intentional rest practices are. I know for me, I have this big lull at 2 p.m. every single day, and that time is blocked off in my calendar for my coffee and my meditation because I need that. Number five, Build in more rest than you think you'll need. Be generous with yourself. If you're anything like my former self, maybe you are very stingy with gifting yourself more time. Like, we've probably all done this, where you're working on a project late at night and 
you're like, okay, I'm just going to take a quick five minute Starbucks break. I'm going to go grab a Starbucks, wait in line, and then come right back. And I'm going to feel fresh and ready when I'm right back here at my desk. But like, did that five minutes satiate you? Probably not. So here is a personal example. I was on a call last night with two of my friends, um, shout out to Dom and Alex, and they reminded me of what I had said before I left for my Europe trip. And I said, oh, I really don't want to go. I just want to stay here and work. Like I said, my old patterns come up and rear their ugly head quite a bit if I do not catch them. And then once I actually got to the beach and I like <laughs> laid down, I was like, whoa, I needed this. And that is exactly precisely why I recommend scheduling in more time than you think you'll need. Because if you have something fun that you can look forward to at the end of the month and a big rest day, you might be working closer and closer to the date. And you might think, well, uh, I could have probably pushed that back to next month because I'm feeling pretty good right now. But as you get closer and inch closer to that date, you're going to realize that, yeah, you probably do need that rest time. Okay, really quickly, one quick note before we wrap and move to the next one. Maybe you're sitting there and you're thinking, uh, Kelly, I only have five minutes for myself. Like, you don't know how full my plate is, and I don't have time to go sit my butt down on a beach. That is totally cool. The point I'm trying to communicate with you is the fact that whatever time you do have, gift it to yourself. Even if that's just five minutes, because five minutes is better than zero. Number six, know your weaknesses and outsmart yourself. Figure out the things that you cave into easily and then outsmart yourself. Like if you love a little Instagram right before bed, but you want to be more intentional with your evening, you know, wind down rituals, like strategically move the phone out of your bedroom and plug it in somewhere else so you can't get it when you're laying in bed. If you are addicted to refreshing your email, delete it off your phone. If you find yourself on Facebook a lot, like get Facebook newsfeed eradicator. That one is amazing. So for me, two big things that I did to outsmart myself, aside from the things I've already mentioned, is one, my laptop... Uh, I didn't buy another laptop. I bought an iMac because I knew that if I bought that really damn cute little rose gold Mac Air thing, I would have like put it in my purse and taken it everywhere with me. I'm like, oh, just going to hop out and do some emails. No, I got to leave my iMac at home. That standing thing physically cannot come with me. And it is the best thing that's ever happened to me work-wise. Number two, Instagram is a big black hole for me. So I know that... Uh, I will go on Instagram if I'm just waiting around in line or out and about. So I seriously only have a talk and text plan. Yeah, I know, right? Kind of crazy. No data. Yeah, you heard that right. No data. Because I know that it's going to be a one-way ticket to Instagram land. And I do not need to spend more time on Instagram. All right, people. And there you have it. That is the show for today. Thank you for listening. I am going to whip through those six strategies one more time. Uh, every time I do this, I feel like, <laughs> you know, when they are, the flight attendant is on the plane and they're like, and now we're going to do it one more time in French, or now we're going to do it one more time in Espanol. So here we go. One more time in English. <laughs> Understand that rest is productive. Go unplugged. Take your rest in a way that works for you. Schedule it in. Build in more rest time than you think you'll need. And lastly, know your weaknesses and outsmart yourself. So. There we have it. That is the full show for today. I hope you learned something or got a new idea that you can take away and apply to your own life. Plus, if you know somebody that could benefit from this show, or if you just found it useful, take a second to share it with someone else. I honestly wish someone had shared this kind of material with me earlier on. So my intention is that this work gets into other people's hands, especially if they need it. So thank you as always for listening and tuning in and I will catch you on the flip side next week with another solo show. So until then, adios and uh, don't forget that the exits are located at the front and the back of the airplane. (laughs) All right, signing off. Bye friends. 
Thank you so much for tuning in and listening today. If you love this episode, please take a second to share it with somebody that you know needs to hear this message. And if you feel so called and so moved, please write an honest review of what you think about this podcast in iTunes and leave me some stars. That would truly help me out on my journey to helping millions and millions of people. And until next time, have a lovely day and I'm so excited to see you back here soon. 